number, best intro number 100 here. Yes, that's right. Same Retired same. with 112. Yeah, that's Scotty, yeah. No, first, first dog team to win, first dog to win Yukonuba, National Law Show, and the Westminster. That's right, wow. That's incredible. That's exactly accurate. <laughs> what colors do these come in, you know? Uh, black, wheaten, brindle. In some places, grizzle. Oh, and steel and iron gray in the UK. They steel, iron, gray. Steel, gray, and iron gray. Is that That's right. <laughs> well, they just added that back into our standard. It's amazing. I've never met anyone who knows so much about dogs. And the people who've been in dogs all their life don't know as much as dogs. It's amazing. So, how was school today? Core. And when I and at the end of the day, when I refused to study, you know what they did? What? They pinned me to the floor. What no, I was just saying no, and they just pinned me. Yeah, that must have been. That awful. just made it worse. I know. They don't know what makes it worse. Why doesn't anybody? Why does nobody like me? You wrote that today yeah. in speech. I started. Then I started crying. And they don't even know I had feelings. Okay. I can understand that. For a child with Asperger's, it's so hard to be in so close to being like everybody else and people expecting you to be like everybody else. But to have these little different ways of being or hypersensitivities or anxieties, and that makes it hard to be in the world. Well, I think one of the, the major problems in Asperger's disorder is communication. Even though they have normal verbal abilities, they often don't uh, read social cues well, and they don't read nonverbal language, you know, body language. So, and up to 80% of our communication is nonverbal. So this puts children with Asperger's disorder at a, at a disadvantage. And that can impact friendships, it can impact the ability to connect with the outside world. Give me 11 turtles. 11 turtles. Yeah. What are those? Yeah. 11 turtles. Yeah. They often are drawn to animals because animals are very accepting. They are non-conditional. You don't have to read nonverbal language with them. You know, as he got older, it went to dinosaurs or it went to these exotic animals that people have never heard of. And, and you know, he'll, he'd run up and approach people and say, did you know that the blah, blah, blah sloth has the longest toes of any sloth in the world? And people are like, wow, really? And they, you know, it's coming out of left field. We tried to explain to him that, you know, you can't just run up to people and expect them to play. And he goes, how do I do it? You guys, and you guys to go in there too, and I'm gonna come in there. There's gonna be ladies out there. like, a few cars and like, several of the mastodons, those hairy elephants, like, like That's what you're gonna do in the New York? And listen, on the sidewalk, there's gonna be all these celiophysis dinosaurs. Celio, can you draw me a celiophysis dinosaur? Kind of, they kind of, what really, does it look like? It's one of the earlier dinosaurs. Is it a giant dinosaur? Is it's, it's uh, only 10 feet long. Only? Hollow bones. Hollow no. bones? Yeah, it, it, was, that... it was a fast running dinosaur. Corey is no. extremely advanced drawing wise. He's a sixth grader and the work that he produces is beyond many of my professors at a well-esteemed college and <laughs> university. You know, Corey is, uh, he's a brilliant kid and you know, I think it's the nature of how his brain is made up, but he truly has a photographic memory. He can look at a picture draw it once and it's 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 frozen in his in his memories it's interesting if you look at his drawings and the angles 
and the eyes and all of that. It's like he's, he's seeing something that the typical person doesn't see. He's explained his brain to me at times as that it's always on play. He said, my mind is like a DVR and it's really hard for me to stop, to hit the stop button. It just goes on and on forever. Every breed. I saw such a change in him last year when he became interested in dogs. This is kind of a connection that, that we have with Corey, and it hasn't been until he developed this obsession with dogs. And he started learning about the breeds, and then it became, can we go to PetSmart and see dogs? Can we go to the dog park to see dogs? You have to say it politely. Excuse me, it's a Pomeranian. Oh, it is. How cute. From the German province of Pomerania. They are? Yeah. That doesn't even sound like a real place. That sounds like you made it up. Well, they sense well, like... Like, where cool. are the Labradors from? Labradorio? No, they're like from, actually from Newfoundland. I'm named for the Labrador Sea that they worked in. Wow. So when you think about know Newfoundland, this. that name is taken. Oh. That's a cute little dog. And the Weimarer name for the Weimar Republic. Oh my gosh, poor. Anatolian Shepherd, they're like from Anatolia, or modern Turkey. The Rhodesian Razorback, Rhodesia, which is now modern Zimbabwe. What do you think it is? Aside from the knowledge that he's gained um, on dogs, and he's been able to retain almost every fact about every breed. The connection that he's been able to make with people who have dogs is invaluable for a kid like him. I don't know what to expect, really. I don't know if it's going to be overwhelming for him. My hope is that he doesn't walk around there kind of guarded and holding his ears because of the noise, because I imagine that it's going to just naturally be loud. He hears things louder and scratchier and more irritating. It's almost like he has a megaphone, and so things are coming in like that. He also doesn't have a screening to block out the foreground and background noise. So if there's a lot of background noise, he doesn't have that screening. So it's coming in just as loud as the conversation he might be having with you at a table. He hears the world louder and more intensely. This is 
the best. This is my. This is the best day ever. We just saw a non-recognized Bree here. Eli passed away. <gasps> Son. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. This is one of Eli's boys. That's one of his sons. I'm, his daughter was first in the good pile in 2010 for the herding group. Yes, Surprisingly, <laughs> unlike the German Shepherd. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I'll say. I just saw a knot. remember those pictures back there? That's Eli. Right? Yeah, I remember the non I saw a non-recognized breed, two Bergamasco. He touched so many people, it was unbelievable. Uh, I never realized that. That's incredible. Example. Exactly. Example. I mean, I've got, I have chills. Going to see dogs has become our sport and our passion. Dogs have definitely become a way for Corey to communicate with the world. People um, enjoy dogs so much is because they feel like um, they have a special um, connection that they're almost human and they can feel what you're feeling. When uh, you've had a rough day, they're happy to see you and they don't care what's happened or what you say to them, they love you for who you are. We love these dogs. I would personally rather be around them than with most human beings here. Probably put hundreds, hundreds of thousands of miles on the road with them. And he truly was your best friend. He would have been 13. And he was a great dog. Honestly, a great dog. You know, I I think I connect with him on like an athletic level, you know, because I'm into sports and I'm always moving and I'm always out very outdoorsy and, and they're the same way. And sometimes you'll get as crazy. People will say, like, a dog knows when you're upset. A dog knows. Those people are nuts. I happen to be one of them. You know, like, even when we are at home, when you get sick, they know it faster than you know. I think they read the world differently than we do. These children will use their particular narrow interest to try to reduce their anxiety. If they can focus just on dogs, then the world will kind of calm down and go away, and they can screen out the problems that are creating this heightened sense of anxiety. I think Corey's very self-aware. And we're driving home, and he said, oh, I, I just wish I could make all this autism stuff just go away. And I, I remember I had to pull over to the side of the road because it just took me kind of off guard. I've never heard him say anything like that before. 
and I put the car in park and I turned around and I looked at him and I said, I don't want to hear you ever say that because you know something? You wouldn't be the child that you are. You wouldn't be this person, this amazing person, if you didn't have autism. You wouldn't have this great interest in animals and in dogs and this ability to draw. If you were just like a typical kid, I don't know that you would have all these gifts. Don't ever think that. I don't want you to never have this part of you. This is who you are.